One time, at the Marine Drive, I was so happy with the breath of the sea tingle my lips that automatically I bellowed my belly to take a deep swig of the intoxicating sea mist. My lungs puffed up to optimum capacity, my heart chakra expanding with joy, my neurons getting musical. I was slipping into a meditative bubble. Happy as I was, I let out a happy whistle. Have you ever known prickly people who try bursting your bubble? I'm sure you have. Itching to place me in her self-separated assembly lines, said my self-conscious aunt sitting beside. Why are you misbehaving? Girls don't whistle. What? I thought. A sexist can diagnose a gender-decided reason, purpose, function and role, can act like a dementor, a killjoy, an emotional black hole in the happiest of moments and for the smallest unit of life. For Brett even, must say, great skills you, congratulations. But the non-conformist in me had to speak up. It shows my lungs are strong and I don't smoke, defiantly said I. Even more horrified, she hissed like a secret agent on a lethal mission. Don't say it ever again. Girls don't smoke. Wow, I wonder if someone's pursuing techniques to divide, to squeeze an entire life through a needle's eye, as though life was meant to be shrunk to fit an outdated job profile, where the role, the appraisal, even the realization of your dissatisfaction and the choice to voice it was narrowed down to a fixed style, all depending on the body in which you reside. Then, yes, one can find gender linked to even smoke that holds no promise, shape or form. Boys can burn their lungs go on, but if a girl even takes a puff, it's no more a health concern. It's suddenly a big blast of pointy questions hurled at her dignity, at her morals. It's no more about her self-care or her lungs. Whom are we kidding? It never really was. It's bad for your looks, say the well-meaning ones. One simple breath of fresh air and pure joy showed me there was a different yardstick, one for girls and one for boys. Nobody knows exactly why girls must behave and boys mustn't cry. Yet everyone wants to take charge to sound wise. To be self-appointed managers who take a small bodily difference and magnify to suit their own mind. A difference has become more sacred than health, character, happiness and life. Why? My aunt didn't know her own why. So this time I let it pass by. I was there to win the war. For petty battles, I had no time. So I got soon, I got lucky to whistle on a radio channel. Promptly said my threatened aunt, no big deal. Not like you have a world record. I shrugged, I continued to whistle. The day of my performance at a famous festival, the same aunt said, wow, can I come to watch you? This is brilliant. You see, people change. It makes no sense to start to rebel to comply, to stop to settle to comply, or to deny because of what anybody says. Bless those who curse you. If they can't beat you, they'll join you. Boys or girls, the principle works just the same. So, no disrespect to those who don't, but I value my breath and I love to whistle.